Father Emmanuel Manassero. Father Manassero attended the oratory in Turin in 1885 and lived close to Don Bosco for three years. He told the story of how, when he was only in year seven, he used to smuggle himself in with the year 12 students to go to confession with Don Bosco. He became a Salesian novice the year Don Bosco died in 1888 and made his perpetual vows in October 1889. He was just 16 years of age. He arrived in Australia on the 21st of April 1927 with Father Michael Maiocco seeking to establish the Salesian effort. After purchasing Rupert's Wood, Father Manassero was appointed Rector of Sunbury. Father Manassero was responsible for all the forward planning and decision making that would shape future Salesians' work. The pioneer of Salesian College in Sunbury, Father Manassero left Australia on the 28th of May 1929 and was sent to Rome for lighter and congenial duties. A very calm and peaceful person and with his wealth of experience and genuine Salesian spirit, he was invaluable to the young students of Salesian College. He celebrated his golden jubilee of priesthood in April 1946 and died on the 29th of May, aged 73. Father Michael Maiocco. Father Maiocco was born in Italy in Penango on the 5th of July, 1901. He became a Salesian novice in 1917, made his final vows at Foglizo in 1922 and was ordained a priest in April 1925 in New York. He worked in America for six years and then came to Australia as secretary to Father Manassero. In June 1927, Father Mayoko said the first mass at Rupert's Wood in the smoker's room, now commonly known as the front parlour. He was Father Manassero's right-hand man and his maturity of character and judgment provided great support. He was known as a caring, friendly, smiling and encouraging man and these characteristics made many consider him a clone of Don Bosco. He was gifted in music and established the first band and choir at Rupert's Wood. He also had elementary knowledge of farming and threw himself into the job of farm manager at Rupert's Wood and made a success of it. Father Mayoko began the herd that bred champion Frisian cattle which were renowned throughout Australia. Father Mayoko died on October 31st, 1942 at the age of 42 years and was buried in the Sunbury Cemetery. His remains were later reburied in the Salesian Cemetery at Rupert's Wood. William Norton was born at Murphy's Creek, Tanagala, near Bendigo on the 22nd of November, 1862. He was an investor and one of the greatest pastoralists Australia has ever seen. He formed the company e w Norton with his brother, buying large quantities of stock and later reselling in smaller lots to suit prospective buyers. William married 24-year-old Delia Nolte at Emerald, Queensland in October 1903 and had five sons and one daughter, but she died one year after the birth of her sixth child, leaving William to bring up his young family single-handedly. William's generosity was unbounded but silent. He gave thousands of pounds to a fund for World War I returned servicemen and his monetary gifts to farmers almost wiped out by the great bushfires in Gippsland early in the 20th century went unheralded. He purchased Rupert's Wood in 1926 and sold the property the following year, 1927, to the Salesian Order. William was a very generous and practical benefactor and continued his association with the Salesian community through substantial donations and the provision of extra land that enabled the establishment of the agricultural farm. William Norton died in Rockhampton, Queensland in June 1935 at the age of 72. William Norton's granddaughters and family members are here today. Joe and Jessie Colleton. Mr. and Mrs. Colleton came from Scotland in 1952 and worked at Belinda Vale for Sir Rupert and Lady Clark for four years. But the difficulty of getting to Mass regularly was a big factor in taking up an offer of work at Rupert's Wood. During 30 years, Mrs. Coll, as she was affectionately known, exercised her considerable skills as a cook and laundress, while Joe saw to the cleaning of the mansion, the classrooms, grounds, gardening and maintenance. 
Homesick boarding boys were often comforted with Mrs. Cole's motherly affection and she even received cards from overseas boarders during the 60s and 70s. Joe was diligent and quiet in his work and a perfectionist at everything he did. He had a very colourful history, having been a driver for King George during the war years and in particular played a very important role in ensuring King George was safe from the fighting at Dunkirk. The Collertons lived in one of the residences on the farm until the early 90s, but when Jesse passed away, a broken-hearted Joe made the decision to retire from and leave Rupert's Wood to be closer to family. The Collertons were sadly missed in the Rupert's Wood community, but their spirit is alive in our Collerton house, named in their honour. Angela Killingsworth arrived at Rupert's Wood in 1991. She oversaw the smooth transition from a boys' boarding school to a co-educational Catholic secondary college with the introduction of girls at Year 7. Angela's educational experience led to a very smooth transition and she soon had the girls feeling at home. Angela was part of the leadership team holding the position of Deputy Principal of Administration up until 1995 when she left the college to take up the position of Deputy Principal at CRC Sydenham. From there, she then furthered her career by accepting the position of co-principal at Marion College. After making her mark there, she moved on to Karatha, where she was principal and then principal of Catholic College Wodonga. She's currently working as an educational consultant, secondary, at Wangaratta Catholic Education Office, Sandhurst. Michael Walsh. Michael attended Rupert's Wood in Form 2, 1971, and graduated Year 12 at the end of 1974. After graduating from Monash University Faculty of Medicine in 1981, he practiced in the field of emergency medicine and now has over 25 years' experience in health service policy and management, both in Australia and overseas. He's held a range of senior health department and hospital management positions in Western Australia and Victoria. In 2004, Michael moved to London as Chief Executive, South East London Strategic Health Authority. He was Senior Responsible Officer for the London Cluster of Connecting for Health IT program. In 2006, he moved to the role of Chief Executive for the National Health Authority in Qatar. He was Chairman of the Permanent Licensing Committee responsible for Health Professional and Facilities Accreditation. He is now Chief Executive of Cabrini Health, a Melbourne-based Catholic health service provider since December 2008. Michael is Fellow and current Vice President of the Royal Australasian College of Medical Administrators and a Fellow of the Australasian College of Health Service Managers. Outside work, Michael and his wife Netta are kept busy raising three teenage sons and spending weekends on the family farm. Johnny Famishan attended Salesian College from 1956 to 1958 and endeared himself to the Salesians, in particular to Brother Hamilton, who was an avid supporter and fan. Those who taught Johnny remember him as a happy little fellow who got on well with his schoolmates, was a good footballer and a real champion on roller skates. Johnny's French father, the lightweight champion of France, gave his son a pair of boxing gloves while he was at Rupert's Wood, and of course, the rest is history. Johnny was famous in the boxing ring after becoming the new featherweight boxing champion of the world in London in January 1969 and won the hearts of Australians and people across the world. Johnny was an electrician by trade and he returned to his trade even after winning the world title. Johnny was the first Melbourneian crowned King of Moomba in 1970 and he was inducted into the Sport Australia Hall of Fame in 1985. In 1991, Johnny was badly injured when a car hit him while he jogged outside Sydney's Warwick Farm Racecourse, which resulted in horrific injuries. Johnny was inducted into the World Boxing Hall of Fame in Los Angeles in 1997. He is here with us today with his lovely wife of 16 years, Glenys.